took a train out of uh, Camp Lejeune. We, we went from uh, my barracks duty to Camp Lejeune. And from Camp Lejeune, we boarded the trains and we went cross country. And uh, it took us more than a week to reach San Diego. And of course, between Camp Lejeune, Tent City, and San Diego, there's nothing. You know, the country was wide open. And, uh, but San Diego was beautiful. And our uniforms were taken away and we were restricted to San Diego, the area in San Diego. And then we boarded a uh, troop ship. And the troop ship left and everybody got seasick. And then everything was peaceful and quiet. We were allowed up on deck and we found out we, the ship had turned around and went back to San Diego. There's a submarine scare. And then uh, we, the ship went back out again and we uh, went to Hawaii. And then from Hawaii we went to American Samoa. And we trained there for I don't know how many months. And then we went on board the ship of the West Point for Guam. Well, when the, when the troop ship arrived in the Solomon Islands, I, I couldn't believe that this was the Guadalcanal where they had the famous battle because a lot of the people who survived Guadalcanal were, were my heroes. John Barcelona was my hero, uh, Lou Diamond, and uh, uh, Bonnie Ross. Al Schmidt, uh, they were my fave. Uh, I, and I'm trying to think of the uh, the aviators. Oh, aviators, it's always, you can always think of the grunts, can't you? Ah, uh, no, but, yeah. oh, uh, Foss. Joe Foss. Joe Foss, he was one of my idols. And I mean, the, it's endless. And, and then during maneuvers on Guadalcanal, uh, I mean, traipsing through the jungles there. And there were still active Japanese there at the time. And uh, oftentimes we'd find them scrounging around in near the mess halls. But... Uh, What'd you do when you found them? <laughs> we kill them. So they'd come looking for food? Yeah, they'd come looking for food and we shot them. I mean, we did the same thing in combat. Every time we got to prisons, we, uh, we kill them. But make what a long... was that? I, I'd been to war myself, but so you got prisoners, and what was the reason? I mean, it was a brutality, it was no quarter given. Tell me about that experience. Well, it, it was the, the indoctrination from the Marine Corps and what you see with your own eyes and know of people who've been through it, what the Japanese did, you know, it's like, they always say, remember the Alamo. We remember Midway Island. We remember... Uh, Corregidor, you know, Bataan. We remember all those things. And we remember and seeing what, what the Japanese did, beheadings and, and killing all the Marines and even the Army and Navy. You know, they gave no quarter, no mercy. And uh, after we did it a few times, it was second nature. It never bothered me. My conscience never bothered me. And uh, you know, we had more opportunity to, uh, uh, to uh, shoot the Japs at f close quarters in Okinawa, you know, three, four at a time. But uh, on Guadalcanal, uh, we find Japs out there coming in on our, on our territory. I mean, it would be nothing for me to shoot them or another guy say, hey, look, there's a Jap. And he blow them away with a BAR, you know. Uh, we had an Indian there, Chief. He, he killed a Jap with a machine gun barrel. He went over, he just caved his head in. And uh, I mean, I, I don't like to say it, but uh, you know, we sort of learned from them, but they were brutal. And I guess we were brutal to a point, but we, we learned that uh, it was either their butt or our butt, and it's not gonna be ours. And uh, I, I saw a lot of my best friends get killed 